Welcome to the Touch MBA Admissions Podcast. Do you need help figuring out which schools to apply to or how to get into the world's top MBA programs? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others on this podcast and on our site, touchmba.com, as they seek the admissions edge. And now, here's your host, Darren Joe. It's Darren here, and welcome to the Touch MBA Podcast, where we help you, MBA applicant, figure out which MBA program out of the hundreds of great MBA programs around the world best fit you, and we try to help you get in. So this week, we spoke with Zvanit van Lubeck from the St. Gallen MBA based in St. Gallen, Switzerland. Well, where is St. Gallen, you may ask? That is uh, on the border of Switzerland and Austria. It actually overlooks a lake. Um, So you want to talk about idyllic settings, they're probably up there in terms of MBA programs. But there's so many more reasons to get your MBA in Switzerland and at St. Gallen. I think you'll learn a lot from this episode. St. Gallen takes a boutique approach to education. And with a one-year program, St. Gallen is very much focused on career placements and career success. So they have uh, graduates working in banking, pharmaceuticals, and healthcare, FMCG, consulting, and manufacturing. Those are the main industries their graduates go into, and most of them tend to stay in Switzerland or the EU. So if you're looking uh, to try to find a job in that part of the world, you have to consider St. Gallen. Nearly 50% of the class made what Zvanik calls a triple transformation, so switching geography, industry, and function. So it's an interesting and unique MBA program. I hope you enjoy this episode. And if you need help figuring out which is the best MBA program in Europe that fits you or in Asia or in the US or in Canada or in Australia, go head over to touchmba.com. Let us know more about yourself, your goals, and what you're looking for out of an MBA. And we'd be happy to give you some free school selection advice. That's what we do. We try to make sure that you're applying to a school that can really help transform you and give you a huge boost in your career. So go head over to touchmba.com, check it out, and on to the episode. Let's go. This week we have one of Europe's top MBA programs on the show, and I can't wait to learn more about it. Ms. Vanit van Lubick is the Vice Director, Head of Marketing and Admissions, Careers and Corporates, for the St. Gallen MBA program based in St. Gallen, Switzerland. She has covers all aspects of the program from admissions to careers and Svanit before she came to St. Gallen has held positions at Rabobank, KPMG Consulting and the Information Management Group, SNT as well. So she has that corporate experience. Uh, So I can't wait to learn more about the program from her. Thank you so much for your time and for coming on the show Svanit. Thank you very much, Joe. Very happy to be here. Great. So what I like to do at the beginning of each episode is get straight to the point, which is what makes the St. Gallen MBA unique from other top business schools in Europe and the world? Well, one, of course, is the location. The St. Gallen MBA is based in Switzerland, as you mentioned before. And Switzerland is really known for many multinationals who have their headquarters here which gives us a very good corporate network for potential careers for our students. So that means we put a lot of emphasis on building this relationship with the corporate networks. And that doesn't mean that people just get placed in in like headquarters. But of course, these companies are a very good jumping board to other global positions afterwards. That's one big advantage of the St. Gallen MBA in this location. Of course, we're part of a bigger university, the University of St. Gallen which is a very good reputation in business management and strategy and in finance, which gives us access to a very good faculty, which is teaching within our MBA. Then we have like a more a boutique approach, which means we have small classes up to 50 people, which allows us a very individual approach, one to learning, so how people actually learn during an MBA, as we put a strong focus on that, as well as on the career services. So the individual support take of defining your career strategy, where to go and how to get there. And then the last point which I would like to emphasize is our focus which goes beyond silo thinking. So of course in an MBA, like in every other MBA school, people are learning about finance, strategy, marketing, all the different subjects. We put a lot of emphasis on learning. Halfway through our curriculum, we have like a learning assessment week 
in which we combine all these different aspects and discuss this with the students in cases. So we have a very strong case-based approach, and that is done in an oral exam as well as a written exam. And in the oral exam, we have a jury of two professors and two corporates on a real-life case uh, based on the Financial Times. So I think these are four sort of very specific elements of our MBA program. I think the first question a lot of applicants might have is, well, what is St. Gallen's reputation in Switzerland and, and in Europe for someone who has never been there before? The University of St. Gallen is very well known for its strategy, finance, but also sustainable business. So the whole house gay has around 20,000 alumni in the world. And I would say in the German-speaking world, we're the number one of the universities. That means that we also in the MBA have a very strong focus on that piece. Yes, and, and I saw that uh, your university has such a long history as well, that it was founded in 1898. So it's been around for a long time, but your MBA program is relatively young, right? Yes, that's true. <laughs> Next year, we will celebrate our 10th, 10th year anniversary. Fantastic. Yeah, it does mean, though, if you look back at the history of St. Gallen, of the University of St. Gallen, the focus has always been on teaching managers and leaders for businesses. St. Gallen had a big reputation, for example, in the textile industry, which changed a lot to where it is now. But this focus on, on teaching managers and leaders how to run businesses has stayed. It was just never in an MBA format but more um, general part of the business school or, or of the business university. I saw that you guys have a mandatory German language requirement for non-German speakers, such as myself, if, if I decided to apply. So how does that work? And Most of our students will find job opportunities and careers in, in an English-speaking environment. At the same time, if you live in Switzerland or if you stay living in Switzerland or the German-speaking area, it's very important to learn the local language just to be able to integrate and at least to have the more informal communications in German. So that's why we put an emphasis on mandatory German classes so that people sort of get more roots in the community they're living in. At the same time, we can't expect people who have a non-German background and have never heard or spoken German before to be able to be fluent in German afterwards. Right. That's not realistic. But everyone will get to a certain level so that they can integrate within the community. The people who already have some German, right? if they studied German before or had classes before, there we can move them up from, say, an intermediate level to a business level. So they, of course, have extra chances in, in the job market. Employers generally value if people show at least a willingness to learn German. So that helps a lot in, on, on the integration. And you mentioned St. Gallen's boutique approach and that your class is usually... 50 students or less. How would you describe the culture of the MBA program, of the students and, and, and faculty and so forth? I think you could describe it as a very collaborative culture, which is respectful to each other. So we have small classes, but we're very high on diversity. Diversity in nationalities, diversity in gender, diversity in background. So we generally have one-third engineers, one-third business people, and one-third, say, IT, science, or medical people. So there is a, a big diversity within the small programs, which means that people have to be open. We really want to have this respectful and open culture, which I think we have in a very collaborative way. Yet at the same time, I think it's a very challenging environment. We have a one-year program and we demand the high performance, which means it's hard working, but you get, <laughs> you get the value out of that. In your last intake, you had close to 30 nationalities represented yes. in your class with, even though the class size was 40. Yes. That's really um, an international cohort. And are, are there any new exciting developments with the MBA program? Next to the full-time MBA, which is a one-year program, we now introduced a new part-time format, which is a program for over two years, which puts even a greater emphasis on assurance of learning. So people will come in for three and a half days a month but next to the classes, there will be preparation due to learning materials, in-class exercises and teaching, as well as afterwards. So we really put a strong emphasis on, on, on continuity and learning and making sure that people are actually can apply the knowledge they, they get here. That's our new format for the part-time classes. I think we have a stronger offering for alumni. So next to our annual homecoming, which we 
I think every school does, but we have about 25% of our alumni coming back every year to us. Wow. Yeah, so that's a really nice event where everyone comes back. But next to that, we offer all the alumni a free elective per year. So that actually means that we really offer this lifelong learning aspect. And it doesn't mean that we expect every alumni to come back every year, but it does mean if you're in a certain position and after three years you change and you have a different field and we have new electives, people could come back for a week and do another elective here for free. So I think that's a very nice and strong offering for our alumni to keep being in touch with us as well as to keep up to date on new business information, new trends and new topics. And you mentioned the strength of the St. Gallen faculty. Is the university known for any academic discipline in particular? St. Gallen is in one way unique in preparing managers to adapt and adjust to different business environments. And I think it's always been to the two topics like strategy and finance. Of course, we're very close to Zurich, the financial heart of Switzerland. These are two strong topics, I think, traditionally as well still our strong focuses of our MBA. And why should candidates get their MBA in St. Gallen? I was reading more about your town and that it overlooks this beautiful lake between Switzerland and Austria and all the pictures I see, it looks like a really idyllic sort of place. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. You know, why would someone from Vietnam or Thailand or even the US come out to St. Gallen? I know you've never been here, but it's true. It's partly the picturesque pictures are true. That means if you look outside, one, you can see the mountains and it's very close to like mountains and skiing and outdoor leisure. On the other side is the lake. So you have the other pieces of, of leisure on that one. Switzerland has a very high quality of living standards. Trains run on time. <laughs> no, different things in life, which is people really do enjoy the work here and, and there's good cultures and companies. A lot of students who are here who originally come with a sort of a global mindset saying, I would like to work anywhere in the world. Once they're here, a lot of people actually start, would love to restart the career within Switzerland and are happy then to move, I don't know, if it's three to five years to another country. So people seem to like to live here. So next to say the, the quality of the MBA, it's also the quality of living, which, which makes a difference for people. And you mentioned the, that Switzerland has a large number of MNCs and that the employer base that recruits from the school is very diverse. Where are all of these MNCs located? <laughs> all over Switzerland. All over Switzerland. Okay. So there's not like one center. Mm, I mean, of course, Zurich is a very strong business center. But if you look, for example, at the pharmaceutical industry, that's mainly based in Basel. Then you have the whole luxury industry, goods, which is mainly based in and around Geneva and Lausanne. So more the French-speaking area. Mm. So you have this different centers, so the financial center is clearly in Zurich, but of course there's also you know, other companies based in smaller towns. But generally I would say the whole Switzerland is strong in finance and pharmaceuticals, then not to forget the whole manufacturing industry, where a lot of our students also want to go, the fast-moving consumer goods and the luxury industry. That would be the five strong industries where also our students end up going in, in big multinationals. Maybe we can switch gears and talk a bit more about your admissions process now that we know more about your school. So my first question is about what fit qualities you're looking for from St. Gallen MBA applicants. You know, I think a lot of applicants hear fit, fit, fit all the time. But what does this mean to you? As we have this one-year program, which takes your students really through a hard core of six months, then a, a bit more relaxed elective subjects and then at the end they have a three-month project working at a company actually the program is very very tight the fifth qualities we're looking for are really people who have the, a strong willingness to change so are willing to get out of the comfort zone and be open for new things so that's a key thing we're looking for in people then if people have engaging personalities so that they can be open to diverse cultures, as we spoke about this before. So the environment is very diverse. It means people need to be willing to engage with other people. Of course, we look for what you call raw intelligence, right? There has to be intelligence base and relevant experience. I saw that St. Gallen recommends four to eight years of uh, recommended experience. And it seems like 
on average compared to other programs or cohort leans towards the more experienced older side. How critical is it that applicants have four years of experience or can they apply with two or three? Applicants can apply with two minimal two years work experience. So that is our minimum like all the other schools. It's true our average is about five, six years work experience. From four onwards, I would say it really fits nicely. One, the, the younger ones really still fit in all this MBA-specific programs which corporates offer. Once people start to apply for more direct applications, it's relevant to have this experience, this work experience. That doesn't mean that it's always, no, if I've been in the IT sector, I'm looking for an IT job. If you saw in our employment reports, we, we have a lot of people who are able to make a triple change, which means a change of role, a change of industry, and a change of country. But that means that people do need to have live experience as well as work experience so they can relate back to things. And once they go here through this program of self-awareness, where to go and these career strategy elements, that they can apply that piece to relevant work experience and transfer that into transferable skills for new opportunities. So for that, it is key to have some work experience. And normally that's a bit more than two years. But we have strong candidates in with just two years of work experience as well. I can't wait to talk more about that triple transformation that you mentioned when we talk about careers. But one interesting fit quality that you mentioned that I'd like to ask you more about was the first one, which is strong willingness to change. I don't think I've ever heard that one before. That's really interesting because I think most MBA programs will say, yeah, have an open mind, but know kind of where you want to go post MBA. Do you see those two things as conflicting, having a pretty set post MBA career plan and this fit quality of strong willingness to change? I don't see that as a conflict, I have to be honest. I know applicants, when they apply also to our program, they have to write down and say, okay, what are my career plans? Why do I want to do an MBA? How can an MBA add value to my career? Yes. So they have to make up their minds and, and say, why do I want this MBA? Which is key. At the same time, once we put all the people in a class and you put them out of their sort of comfort environment, right? because everyone left their country, everyone left their work, we do see that a lot of people start rethinking this. Right? Because one, they get a lot of input from us. Two, we go with them through a very individualized coaching sessions about what do you really want, what are your core values. And if you put these two together, a lot of people maybe get even confused for a while, but rethink their whole career strategy and what they want to do, which is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, so we do like that. But it does mean that people need to be open to change and to try out things. And it could be still that they come back to their original plan, which is also good, or if they want to continue their own career. So if, if I have someone who is in banking and says, I want to stay in banking, but then it's really a decision after being going through the whole process of rethinking things. So that's what we like to see in candidates, that they're open for this and then do decide on certain aspects and then continue to move in that direction. Very interesting. And could you walk us through the life of an application at St. Gallen? So what happens between the time someone submits an application to when they hear back from you? In our application, we have deadlines. So we work with deadlines, so which are every two months. So once the deadlines come up and the applicant has submitted in that time, we review all the applications and uh, look at different criteria. And one would be this internationality, employability, past experience, GMAT scores. No, I think that's all pretty standard for every school. Then we make a selection for the people we would like to interview. These interviews, if possible, take place face-to-face, -face, if not by Skype. That's an hour interview, including a business dilemma, which is like a case, but you could look at it from different perspectives. Um, once that's done, about two weeks after this whole deadline of submissions, we will have an admissions committee where we discuss with different stakeholders all the applications. So we look at from the program side, we look at it from the career side, we look at it from the admission side, and there we look at all this criteria which we talked about before, willingness to change, engaging personality, how is intelligence, relevant experience, and then we take decisions on who do we offer a place in our program, and who do we advise to defer or even advise to do another program or who can we not take on board? The people who we make gave an offer, we put them in contact with alumni so they can gain even a closer experience about 
how is the program really? Is that really what I want to do? And does it fit them? Does your admissions committee conduct those interviews or is it students who conduct the interviews? So the interviews are done by our admissions managers. Student applicants are also possible to meet our admission managers, for example, at the career fairs. But they also do the interviews. Yes. Well, I found uh, two parts of your application process very unique. The first was one of your essay questions, which I absolutely loved, which is think of a well-known business leader and outline the reasons why you believe he or she is undeserving of his or her public acclaim. So I thought that was a really fun twist on, on the standard MBA questions. But the business dilemma is, is what I want to talk about more. So there's an example business dilemma on your site that I'll link to in the show notes so our listeners can go see what one of those would be like. But I wanted to ask you whether you had any tips or advice for applicants who are preparing for that. We decided to go with the business dilemma and not with the case because we have, of course, candidates or applicants who might not be so strong in financial skills yet or have never done marketing before. So we didn't want to ask applicants know how our questions, which they not, actually not have yet, and that's why they want to do the MBA. So we decided to go with the business dilemma where everyone has the chance at looking at an issue and looking at possible solutions. Right? And there's no right or wrong in a dilemma. You could just look at different perspectives. So, of course, to prepare for that, students can do research on the topic. They can discuss it with different people. And I think it's key there to show which different perspectives can you take onto the dilemma. So can you look from different perspectives to the discussion? And that shows the depth as well as the broadness of the discussion in the interview. That's great. And usually discussion of the business dilemma lasts about 20 minutes or? Yeah, I would say so. It's within the interview. So the interview, that's normally about an hour. That's a lot about the candidate and the, the key aspects we would like to see from a candidate, as well as the business dilemma, which is probably then 20 minutes, as well as answering questions an applicant still has to ask. Do candidates have a better chance if they apply earlier in your earlier rounds? You actually have some discounts if candidates apply earlier and get in, of course. So one is the discounts, of course, but the other thing is in one way they have a better chance because we look for this high diversity. So of course, if you from a country where we get a lot of applications, it's better if you're earlier because we would not have so many of this, this country on our new class. The second thing is it's also for us, of course, to plan, right? That's one thing. And, and we give early applicants a special discount on early enrollment. Would you have any last tips for our listeners on how they can improve their chances of getting in St. Gallen? <laughs> Good. That's a nice question, right? I mean, one is, of course... Very direct. Yes, yeah, very direct. <laughs> so one is, of course, on the, on the application and the submission of your application. I mean, key is to write there the good essays, right, which are interesting for us to read, which gives a real story yeah, so that we can imagine what kind of person is behind that application. And sort of the added value an MBA would be for their career, as well as what their added value would be to be in the class. And secondly, of course, for the interview, I think it's key there to show who you are. Partly the really hard and tough interviews, but key is to really find out who is the person on the other side of the table and to show this authenticity. Then we can really work as well. And that also shows his willingness to change and say, that's me. That's where I want to grow. That's where I did big learnings in life, and I learned from that. So we are really looking for that piece in the interviews. Interesting. So could I interpret that as you're looking for someone who is very self-reflective? Yeah, <laughs> that would be a good one to say it like that. And that doesn't always mean that everyone has been successful in everything. It could be that something didn't go right. That doesn't matter. But the key is then if you can reflect on it and learn from it. If we can now talk about financing, could you let us know what percentage of your class get scholarship funding and what your average scholarship amounts are? We do offer scholarships as well as loans. So there's two different financial aids we offer. On the scholarships, they're really merit-based. So we really look at people saying, okay, because they, uh, so we have different categories of scholarships. People have to apply for that specifically. And based on the merit, we decide who would get this as well as the amount we do. And the amounts can vary, but generally it would be, I don't know, 5,000 to 10,000. 
and then the loans is a different process, so that's a different way of financial aid. But that one is really based on need, which uh, the students can prove that they have a financial need, and we need to discuss that if that makes sense for us. Right. Okay. And and when you say merit based, does that mean, for example, applicants with stronger GMATs and and academic backgrounds have a, a better chance, or could you unpack what you mean by merit? Yeah. So merit, we have one. We have, for example, one for the next eleven. So that's not the BRIC countries anymore, but the next 11 countries. So there's one. We have one, for example, for women. We have one scholarship for a specific background. So if we really say a science background or a specific engineering background, where we see that an MBA would add a lot of value and see potential career tracks afterwards, if people can really explain why they think they would need that scholarship because of that, we can fit that to the categories. So there's many different types of scholarships that students can apply for based on their backgrounds and their skills. Yes. How big are your loans? We give out loans to the maximum of the tuition fee. Yep. That's the maximum. But all the applicants, once they have an offer, they will have a talk with our financial manager to discuss the loans, what they would like to have or what they would apply for, and if this is realistic or if there's other ways of financing their MBA. So it's not just an automatic process. It's really a discussion with our financial manager. And would you have any last tips for our listeners in terms of financing their, their MBA at St. Gallen? It is an investment. If you take a year out or if you, if you, even if you do a part-time MBA, it is an investment to do an MBA. So I think people should think in advance how they would like to finance it. Right. It is an investment. You would like to get the value out of it. But I think it's key that people make a financial plan in advance and think where they can get the money from and if they need to rely on other amounts. If we can now talk about careers, which is my, my favorite part of the podcast, and I know you have a, a lot of background here as well. I saw that St. Gallen has 22 corporate partners, including some really big names like ABB, Microsoft, Novartis, and Credit Suisse. What does this mean for an MBA student at St. Gallen? Okay, so we started this whole corporate partnerships a few years ago, where we really started discussing with companies about a win-win relationship on the long term. That means a corporate partnership is really a built relationship between us and a company, where the company has the real intend to recruit every year from the MBA. Of course, requirements met on that one, but they have the strong intent to recruit from us every year. But more importantly, corporate partners take part of our curriculum. So for example, in the full-time program, we have leadership trainings taught by corporates. So I think that's a very unique aspect. And that means that we can include sort of all the, the key requirements and trends corporates see Right? Because they're out there in the market and, market and say that's the skills we need to see from talent coming in, that they already teach this within our MBA program. So the students have the option to choose five out of 12 of these leadership trainings, and the companies come in and take sort of one of their key aspects of their company. If they say a key skill is that we can have responsible leaders, or a key skill is that we are very good in change management, or as key skill is that we're very good in sales and management and, and motivation of, of people, then that's the piece what they train in this leadership training in the full-time MBA. That's one example where we have the corporate partners as part of the curriculum. A corporate partner generally works with us at least for two activities per year and recruits students from our MBA. So this 22 is a growing partnership, right? So we review it every year, but it's a long-term idea between the corporates and us. And we even will set up a corporate advisory board where we discuss these longer term trends with corporates about what are key skills needed, what's changing in the market, where should we focus on. And that's part, of course, if we then have small classes, we can also change and adapt relatively quickly from one year to the other year, the curriculum. And that's, of course, a key advantage for us and for the students as well at the end, right? So they get trained in aspects which are key. I was actually wondering about your integrative courses that you offer as part of your curriculum. Was that, for example, a result of this partnership you have with all these corporates, or has that been part of the program for a long time? It has been developed as part of the interaction with the corporates. 
we had corporates coming in, and I think a classical sentence, but it's the truth, is saying we recruit on hard skills, but we fire on soft skills. That's what a corporate life normally is, right? Once you get to know an employee better, the soft skills get more and more important. So that was partly why we integrated like these courses where we look at different perspectives and also people have to work in teams or include other soft skills to show that they're able to deal with different situations. So we really adjusted the curriculum and one is for example also this oral exam where we look at a case from different perspectives where a student has to present and for example a lot of teamwork we do. Yeah, I think that's great that corporate involvement is so integral to the program and I'm looking at your career placement report as we speak, and I'm looking at companies you listed under corporate engagement, and it's a healthy list of companies, uh, probably over 40 companies, but you have 40 students. So what I'm wondering is why would these companies come to St. Gallen and recruit from an MBA class that only has 40 students? They could go to a, a bigger university and recruit, you know, five people at a time or 10 people at a time. Our corporate partners, realistically, they could possibly recruit one, two students a year who would fit their job requirements. So you could say, wow, it's a big investment of companies to work with us. And at the same time, only be able to recruit one or two people per year. I think that partly has to do with, one, our reputation in the market. So corporates are very keen on working with the University of St. Gallen and especially the MBA program. And secondly, probably has to do with also the past experience now, the people they did recruit and the strong alumni network that they bring with them, that it means more than just recruiting an employee. They enjoy this partly this sort of companies like to what they train internally. They have now an external critical audience, but they could also test if they're right with their assumptions and their inputs. So it's really a win-win relation. The MBA wins from this with, with the students as well as the corporates can win from this. We mentioned earlier in the podcast that nearly 50%, I think it was 48%, right, of your students made a triple transformation switching countries, industry, and job function. And so my question is, how? (laughs) How are they able to do this? And uh, how does St. Gallen help them do this? It's a good question. It's a very high number. And it does mean a very challenging road to go through. Our applicants come in. And they have one year to do this. And that means a lot of adjusting to cultures, working in a different country, but also reflecting and making up your mind what you want to do and then to be very persuasive in what you in getting there. We take the students, so we start the full-time MBA in September. We do a sort of a milder version in the part-time program as well with the students. But we take them really through a self-awareness process. So we give them tools and techniques, how to do this. They get professional executive coaching to help them on this. At the same time, we offer them at least two or three corporate contacts per week. And this could be in a traditional corporate presentation, which we have once a week. It could be in a guest lecture. It could be in a leadership training. So they meet a lot of corporates from different industries they didn't even consider going into. That's awesome. So I think it's really great. (laughs) But it does mean that partly students get this whole overflow of information and they get a bit confused. So we and say then over Christmas, people can really reflect and sit down and think, what do I want to do? So we do help them to build this picture together again to make a career strategy. So what what kind of different areas and niches would I potentially like to work into? Right? And we guide this process and we have experts on board like a Daniel Porro who helps them with the career strategy as well as the whole career services team. We know that plans never always end up as, a, as an implementation in the same way. So we keep flexible. But we then really work with the students say, and try out in the market by getting to know other people, network, and work out is this a realistic plan or not, or do I need to adapt it? And by slowly adapting and changing and being persuasive, we get the students where they want to be. So our final satisfaction on this is if, if the students do come back and say, look, I found my dream job which is a great comment to get from from an MBA student. Absolutely. You mentioned a lot of students would like to stay in Switzerland and in Europe to work. Is it difficult to get work visas in Switzerland for international students? Yes, of course, for Switzerland, you need to get a visa. But I think in in the meantime, there's a lot of other countries where you also need a visa. At the moment, a company has to apply for a visa and show that potential employee is a perfect fit for that job. So it requires from a company a bit of extra administration. Smaller companies 
might sometimes struggle with this, but the big multinationals, they all know how the process works. They all know how to do this and how to file for that. And actually, once a company applied for a visa, we never have had a turn down yet. So it does look like a hurdle, but at the end, if a company decides to go with a candidate, it's not based on the fact if someone has a certain nationality or not, but really it's based on saying, do we think this is the right person for the right job? If they file for an, an, a visa, they normally do get the visa. Even though it looks like a an, an heavy administrative process, I'm still convinced if it's the right candidate, they can get the job. How long can graduates stay in Switzerland after they get their degree? Do they have to have those jobs locked down before they graduate to stay in Switzerland? No, they don't have to. Of course, you know, it would be ideal, but it's, that's not the, the reality either. Students can apply for a job search permit, which is for six months. So they could stay another six months within Switzerland to actually uh, apply and look for the next career step. Is there anything that we didn't cover in terms of unique recruiting opportunities and relationships that St. Gallen has with the corporate community? If you look at our corporates, of course, we have um, we try to build it in a multinational network. We start with getting the strongest ties to the Swiss multi of multinationals based in Switzerland. Sorry, they're not all Swiss. But we do move now more to Europe as well as, for example, building relationships to Asia. Right? Because a lot of our students are interested at least to spend a few years in Asia. So, for example, Singapore or Hong Kong, Hong Kong are really nice hubs for us where we do have a lot of alumni, where we now will push also the, the corporate relationships too. So maybe that's a development for the, for the coming years. How crucial is being able to speak French or German to, to land a, a great job in Switzerland? I think it's, it's crucial if you want to really integrate with the community you're living in, and then it's either German or French. Actually, for jobs, if you focus on, on working in a bigger multinational, you can go ahead with just English. It's really this willingness to want to integrate. And of course, if you really want to work in a, in a startup, which is not global, then language gets really important. Wow, we learned so much about the program and about your relationship with the corporate community. What is the best way for our listeners to get in touch with students and alumni that have been through the program themselves? If, if you really want to speak with and to learn from their experiences, one way is really to contact our admissions. And they will put you in contact with a student or alumni who's either, for example, close to you, home, right, so that you can actually meet up, or even put you in contact with a student or an alumni who has a similar profile or someone you just would like to speak to. So the best way is really always to contact our admissions, and they are happy to connect you further. Great. And is there anything else about the St. Gallen MBA that you just wish more candidates knew about when you're traveling around the world uh, talking about your program? I think maybe it's this, this the St. Gallen. Not everyone knows where St. Gallen is, so partly it's in Switzerland. So, <laughs> sorry, it's a bit, it's not the well-known, best-known city in, in, in the world, but it is a very central location in Switzerland with a lot of opportunities for MBA students. We do try to promote that, that people see that and that maybe St. Gallen becomes for one day a famous city, <laughs> maybe because of the MBA. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much for your time, Zvanet. It was a pleasure speaking with you on the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure from my side. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to the Touch MBA podcast. Don't be shy. We have a mailing list. Go to touchmba.com and get yourself signed up. And we'll keep you posted with the best tips and insider interviews on how to get into your number one school. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook at Touch MBA. See you soon.